The travel agency has expanded its business and decided to include several new branches. Consequently, the air ticket reservation process we've developed so far will be an activity to be done at all branches. This means that, at a given time, there will be personnel from all the different offices executing the same process on the workflow server. So how do we make it so that a branch's processes and tasks are not available to the remaining branches? In other words, an employee at one branch should not be able to execute a task corresponding to a different branch. The solution to this is the organizational unit concept. Organizational units enable us to define groups within an organization, such as branches, departments, and so on. Once the units are created, we assign to them users from the organization. In the case of our travel agency, there are two offices, one in New York and the other one in Miami Beach. Once the organizational units are defined, we assign the corresponding organizational unit to each user. From that point on, the process will inherit the organizational unit of the user who initiates it. This means that users will only view, in their incoming trays, the tasks of the organizational unit to which each user belongs. In other words, users of one branch will not be able to view or execute tasks of another branch. For example, if we assign the New York office to Peter Kent, when Peter initiates a ticket reservation process, the reservations will be of those of the New York office. If James Norton is from the Miami office, he will not be able to view the process initiated by Peter or execute the tasks that Peter can view even when they both access the same GXflow server. Only users in the same branch as Peter will be able to access the tasks of the process initiated by him. In order to define the branches of the travel agency, we will open the GXflow client, log on with the administrator user, and go to administration console, organizational model, and click on organizational unit definitions. Here, we define the type of organizational unit that the firm has, such as branch, department, division, and so on. To create a definition of organizational unit, we press the plus button, and in the window that opens up, we write the type of organizational unit, which in our case is subsidiary, along with the description. The propagable option allows the process to inherit the user's organizational unit. It also indicates that subprocesses will inherit the organizational unit of the parent process. If this is not checked, the user may initiate a process, but it will not inherit the organizational unit defined for the user. When a process has no organizational unit defined, it may be viewed by users depending exclusively on their role restrictions, which is the situation we've been working with so far. Once we've defined the firm's type of organizational units, we define the organizational units per se. To do so, we click on the Organizational Units option. When we press New, we can create an organizational unit by entering its name, type, and description. Let's now enter the data for the New York branch. and then we do the same for the Miami branch. This defines the two branches of the travel agency. For entering users of the New York branch, we select the row and press Members. In the window, we check Anna and Peter as belonging to the New York branch. Prior to defining users of the Miami branch, we must create them. To do so, we go to Users and create user J. Norton, corresponding to employee James Norton, whose password will be jnorton123. We also create user P. Wong, corresponding to employee Patrice Wong, with the password pwong123. 
Once we've created the users, we define their roles. We select user J. Norton and press the Roles button. In the Roles application, we define James as Manager and press OK. Then we select Patrice and define her as an employee. From here we can define Patrice's and James's organizational units. Located in P. Wong, we press the Organizational Units button and select Miami. Now we select Jay Norton and assign him to Miami as well. This is how we define the manager at New York to be Anna Smith with employee Peter Kent, while the manager in Miami is James Norton and Patrice Wong is an employee at that branch. Now let's test the definitions we just made in runtime. First, we sign out and log on with user P. Wong. Then we press the New button and initiate an air ticket reservation process. In the incoming tray, we can see the ticket reservation task as pending execution. Since Patrice has the travel agency employee role, she could initiate the process, and she has the permits to execute the ticket reservation task. And because Patrice is from the Miami office, the process initiated should have inherited the Miami organizational unit. To verify this, we log on as administrator user, then select processes in the process manager. We can see that the process initiated by user Patrice Wong is being executed. If we select the process and go to more actions, we can select organizational units. This way, we can see that the process belongs to the Miami branch because it inherited the definition of Patrice Wong's organizational unit as expected. Now let's sign out and log on with user Peter Kent from the New York branch. We can see that the incoming tray is empty. Even when a process has been initiated and the ticket reservation task remains pending, regardless of Peter having the adequate role, he will not be able to view it because he belongs to a different office from the one corresponding to the execution process. Likewise, the customer may only be assessed and the reservation may only be authorized by user James Norton from the Miami branch. In sum, only users assigned to the branch of the initiated process may interact with it, executing tasks according to their assigned roles. We should point out that, if required, it is possible to add new organizational units or change the organizational unit in a process by using the workflow API. In the next video, we will see how to perform analysis and obtain performance statistics for processes and tasks.